Welcome back. I get asked questions a lot about pruning trees and I wouldn't say that I'm a pruning expert, just that I don't have fear of butchering trees. And I think a lot of people have fear of butchering trees. They think, I'm gonna kill this thing. There's just no way that this is a good idea. Like, like if I cut it, if I break any part of it, it's probably going to die. It won't, it won't die. So I'm standing here in front of a neighbor's fig tree right now and she asked me, would you be able to prune that tree for me? And I said, sure. I don't mind doing that one bit. This is a fig tree, so I'm all dolled up in a full body suit because figs have latex and I'm somewhat allergic to figs. If you have any kind of latex allergies or anything like that, you gotta be careful. The white sap of figs will mess you up. And also, I couldn't find my favorite pants. My favorite pants that I, that I prune in. My pruning pants. I couldn't find my pruning pants, so it's the white bee suit. Okay, but it also kind of makes me look like one of the Beastie Boys from the video for Intergalactic, so that's cool. Um, so we're gonna take a shot at pruning this tree back, and we are going to teach it to be small. It's important, particularly when you prune larger limbs, to undercut first. That is to cut from underneath and then cut down from the top so it doesn't just break and split and tear a big chunk of bark and wood out of the tree because that does not heal very well. So you start from the bottom, you figure out where you cut on the bottom and you come down again from the top. So all the cracks there were only in the middle. But it's a nice clean edge right here. Nice clean cuts. So what I'm doing is making sure this thing is accessible. Next year it'll grow back and it should fruit even on the new growth. And you know, this year it had fruit on it, but a lot of the fruit was way up in the top of the tree where it couldn't be reached. You know, it's like 10, 12 feet tall and it's up uh, across my neighbor's roof and it's hanging over the air conditioning unit, jamming up against the house. It's too much tree for this little corner, so I understand why she wants to cut it. Now, she wants me to take some of this lower stuff that's going out to the edges here and bring it back so the guy can mow around it easily. Whereas if this were in my yard, I would probably just let these side branches go out because all this is picking space. You know, anywhere that's within a nice picking area, right? Reach and pick, reach and pick, rather than jumping up on your toes and trying to reach stuff up top. That's what we want. Uh, you want it down where you can reach it. And if you prune late in the year like this, this is actually a little bit late. We should have done it last month or in July. But it'll decrease the vigor of the tree because we're taking a lot of the active leaves and the nitrogen that's in them and the active growth and the sap and everything and we're removing it from the tree. Whereas if you do this when the tree is dormant in the winter, like before it wakes up in the spring, you can get trees to grow just like crazy. 
like insane. They will just shoot back and grow so fast. I mean, if you prune a peach, we're talking like six feet of growth. This thing would easily do six feet of growth in one year too. I mean, they're very, very vigorous, particularly when they have an established root system. You cut them when they're dormant, they wake up and they're like, oh, I guess a deer or something must have ate the top, but I got all this strength, all this sap, all this vigor that I've been storing in my roots all season and I'm ready to go. And they'll shoot right for the sky. So if you want to control for height, you don't cut in the spring. You can cut to shape and get rid of crossing branches and you can prune to make a tree really take off and jump into the shape that you want. But if you want to keep it shorter, you cut it later in the year. And we're getting close to frost. You don't want to prune right before frost, but we've got about three or four months, most likely, before it happens. So we're, we're on that edge. But the closer you get to frost, the more risk of the tree going, oh, goodness, I have to put on new growth. And then it puts on new growth, and then that growth freezes off, and it leads, leads to disease and problems and maybe even killing the tree. Two times a year that I usually prune are right when they're coming out of dormancy or right before they come out of dormancy in the early spring, late winter, and then in the middle of summer near the solstice in order to prune for vigor. But hey, you know what? This one here has, uh, it's done with its fruiting and this is when she wanted me to cut it, so I'm gonna cut it, it's not gonna kill it. It's, uh, it's just not exactly the right time. So when you look at a fig, you think, man, this thing is really twiggy. It must be, uh, it must be sick, or maybe it's going to sleep for the winter or whatever. Don't get too concerned if you have a fig tree about whether or not it's got leaves on it. The leaves on a fig tree come and go through the seasons. You get a lot of rain and then it's like, oh, I don't want leaves anymore. It gets really dry, it's like, oh, I don't want leaves anymore. What am I doing with all these leaves? I mean, they're just, they're just that kind of a tree. They will drop leaves occasionally. Suddenly the leaves all kind of look lousy and they just fall off in your hands. It's like, I'm not even, I'm just, I can just brush them all off. I don't know if it's ready to go to sleep for the winter or, or if it just doesn't like the fact that it rained for an entire week. You know, it's a Mediterranean tree. It's not ideally adapted to the rainy south. It's, it's used to a climate with a little, a little less rainfall, like one quarter of the rainfall we've got and so you know the trees tend to get little brown edges and spots on them and stuff but they'll grow back and they'll be lush and green and then and then one day they'll drop their leaves again so don't don't really get hung up on it you know it's 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 just the way figs are they're very weird and I'm gonna get rid of this big piece right here and see if I can drop it directly into the camera and then I'll do a GoFundMe for a new camera help I was John Bad cut. There, I didn't undercut it well enough. Did you see that? No, you didn't see that. And I, and I was just trying to keep it from going into the camera. Not that I don't trust that you guys would go fund me a new camera. It's just that I'm not actually a millennial. Sorry, millennials. I mean, it's just I'm not a boomer. Sorry, boomers. If you make a mistake and you've got an ugly cut, it makes sense to fix it. You don't want spots that, in big ripped out areas where it might not heal properly. And sometimes when you have a great big branch coming down, it's just so much pressure and it splits in a way you don't expect and it tears it. So just cut a little further down and try again. So the homeowner said, you know, there's some sort of weed or something growing right through the middle of that fig tree. So as I get closer in here, I realize this is another edible that's growing right through the middle of the fig. Anybody recognize this? Leave a comment. What edible is this? 
Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to just cut it down, but if I could transplant it, I would. Very, very useful species, but it is in exactly the wrong spot. And you know what they say, a plant in the wrong spot is in the wrong spot. And you should kill it. So I got the big structural stuff out of here, and now it's just clean up with a pair of loppers. I like regular loppers. Those ones that you twist and they extend, don't get those, they're horrible. They're horrible because you're always not quite getting as good a grip. Just get dedicated ones that are awesome. And don't mess around with this fiddly stuff. I mean, it's actually kind of hard to get them now. Everybody wants to do these little twist handles and they come in and out. But sometimes when you're cutting, you're like, eh, it's uneven and it, it just doesn't give you a great grip. Get something that's like dedicated and you know, get yourself a little pair of hand pruners and a pair of big loppers, but don't try to like half bake a tool right in between. I can't stand those. I bought a pair once because they're the only pair I could get, and I like the traditional stuff. And I went to prune a pear tree, and it was such a pain in the neck um, because they would extend on you, and they would slip, and they would turn a little bit when you gripped them. It's better to just get really good, solid ones, and you may have to pay a little more, but the ease of labor is well worth it. And just, just having a tool that does what it's supposed to do rather than messing around. I'd say we about got it. Now we just need to clean up. and letting all this potential soil fertility go to waste here. So I'm just gonna drop them in the front yard. Let them dry down a little bit, drop all their leaves to feed my little fruit trees. And then I could drag away the bare branches for biochar later in the fall. Now if I were feeling ambitious, I could take these branches behind me and take the chainsaw or the saw or the loppers and just chop them into little bits. Really, in order to feed a fruit tree, if you've got a bunch of limbs that you've downed, all you gotta do is cut them into sections and lay them on the ground around it. Just make a rough mess. Just get everything down there on the ground because the more surface area that's touching the ground, the faster things rot down. So all you really have to do is just chop some stuff up and drop it on the ground and it will rot and it will feed it, just like you mulched. But it doesn't matter if it's big hunks of trunk or leaves or whatever, it's all gonna rot down slowly and it's going to feed the ground. But I don't really feel that ambitious. I'm just gonna let the leaves fall off of these things for a while and I might get around to it later. So I'm gonna wish you a very good rest of the week and a very green thumb. And from here, I'm going to let my daughter do.